Oh, what's up, people? Dobbs with Wolsey Sprite here, and welcome to episode 5 of my 5 Games Gems, or whatever it's called. I'm just making up n names as I go along until it pretty much hits onto the title screen, because, like I said, these are pre recorded as always. Anyhow, last episode, we did the Famicom. Holy crap, people, that was one hell of a collection of gems that I had. Really, some expensive games that I picked up for pretty much nothing in Japan. But now we're moving on to the future, when there was a console that came out that people thought was stupid, not very good, and moved onwards. And then a few years later, they made a massive, terrible mistake. And they went back to try and pick them up, and by God, they had to pay an arm and a leg for only a wire that cost you around about 100 to 150 pounds. And that console is the Nintendo GameCube. Now, the Nintendo GameCube didn't have a massive long lifespan. It came out, I think, around about in 2002, and I think it died around about 2006 to 2007. I may be wrong, just listen. That's all I want to know. You guys can correct me if you want in my, in my comments down below, but... Like I said, it's the only things I've only read about. But what the GameCube had, though, was something that a lot of consoles didn't have. And that was a wide range of so many different types of games. From horror, to action, to fantasy, to absolute weirdness, to wonderful, to crazy, to sports, to everything. But the one thing about it, though, it was actually a reasonable price games console back in the day. And then, like I said, a few years later, them games did not became cheap at all. They went extremely pricey. And if you try and look for an actual GameCube right now, and it's a standard purple one, you're fetching yourself quite a lot of money. Even if you're looking for the silver, the black, or even the very rare one, the orange one. My god, you're paying literally your left kidney for that console. Not without even spending any games. But that's another thing though. The video games, that's where it becomes very pricey as well. Some games can be quite cheap to run about £5 to £6 each, but some games could go up to 30 to 40 to even 50 But even more other games could go from 100 to even 200 to even £300 for a copy of the game. But either way, I've got five games right here that are my gems that I have in my personal collection. Now, I may change a little bit around here because I couldn't even take... I couldn't have them not on, go on the list because I had to. Like I said, I have my personal collection, the Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, Kingdom Hearts, Yakuza, Pokemon and Persona. I had to I had to redo this for, for this console because I had to. But before we do, a massive homage to an extra game. To be honest, it's not even a game, but it is a disc form. And that is the Game Boy Player. This is a gem if you guys are planning on getting yourself a Nintendo GameCube. What this does, it makes you play Game Boy games. Mainly the Game Boy Advance. And wow people, this thing rocks. If you are looking for an actual disc of this game, this this little piece of hard drive, you're paying over at least 55 to even £70 for this game. But if you combine it with the actual mechanism that goes underneath your GameCube, you're paying around about 100 to 150 easily. And I got two of these. That's why they're gems, because I had to pay homage to this, because this was actually really, really good. But now, let's get on to my five gems on the GameCube. The first one I have as a gem is this one. The Legend of Zelda... The Collector's Edition. What this is, pretty much, it's four classic Legend of Zelda games in one flipping disc. Seriously. One disc. One disc, and it has four games in it. You don't really see that nowadays, unless you're looking at the new consoles. But what this game has, it has Legend of Zelda 1 from the NES, which I already talked about, it's a gem in my eyes. Legend of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, an alright game, quite fun. Ocarina of Time on the, on the Nintendo 64, and Majora's Mask. Not only that, it contains the demo for the brand spanking new game that was getting announced when this game came out, The Wind Waker. So pretty much four games and a demo in one little disc. Do you see how much of a gem this could go for nowadays? I don't even have a clue how much this game is worth now. But all I know, it's definitely a gem in my eyes. Sadly for me though, 
when I got this game, when I was a kid, I ran out some money and I did not buy Wind Waker. Which was a big massive shame for me, but not to worry though, I did get myself my HD remastered version on the Nintendo Switch. Which I'm happy with. But still, this is definitely a gem in my eyes. It's so good. Four fantastic games from the Nintendo 64 and from the NES with a demo of Wind Waker. What is not to hate? And what is not to love? I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't, I don't know them type of words. I never really say them. It's just what people say. But there's nobody I do not know that does not like Legend of Zelda. Like everybody that I know likes Legend of Zelda and they have always wanted to buy this. And they can never do it because it's so damn expensive. That's why it's in my gem collection. Next up, time for a very weird one. And I played it for hours on end with my brothers, with my friends, or even with myself. And that is Black and Brews. A pretty much a competitive sports boxing game. And it's super funny. Really is funny. Because you play as different type of characters, and yes, some of them are stereotypes and everything. Like you have a a Lucha Libre from Mexico, you have a Brooklyn Brawl who's in jail, you have a Texas lady, you have yourself a black military man. Yeah, very controversial stuff for this time of age, but this was actually so much fun of a game. And if you guys have not had a chance to even see this game for real life, please, if you guys have an emulator, or even do have a GameCube, try and pick this up. It is a fun, fun game. And definitely, it's a way lot more fun when, you have a, when you're playing it with two players. Super fun. And it's also to sort out any bitter rivals with your friends if you want to play something else. Play this, because you will end up getting black and bruised. <laughs> Third game I'm going to talk about now is, like I said, I've talked about this on my channel a few times. What is my favourite, one of my favourite Sonic games, and that is Sonic Adventures 2 Battle. This is amazing. To be honest, my favourite Sonic game of all time. Yeah, this is my favourite. People can be controversial and say that this game is bad, but I freaking love it. This is before I'm pissing on the moon. This is before One Polygon Rose. I mean, Rouge. The, um, anything about it, pretty much a lot of people nowadays on YouTube are paying homage to this with, with voiceovers. And if you guys want to see that, I'll put in the link in the description down below for the voice actors who actually voice over this whole entire game. It was super funny. But this game on its own was so much fun. You get to play as bad guys or good guys. You can play with Team Sonic or Team Dr. Eggman with their own stereo, with their own stories. And if you want to know what's more about this game, pretty much it is the same story as the animated series from Sonic X. Pretty much exactly the same. So if you've seen the anime, you know what happens in this game. But the game play is super fun. Can glitch out a few times, but it's still fun. And like I said, it still have its original price from Alistair. $14.99 when it first ever came out. Do you know how freaking cheap the GameCube games were back then? $14.99 for a GameCube game back then. This game's going for way more than $14.99 nowadays. Insane. But yes, it's definitely a gem in my eyes. I encourage you guys to try and pick that up if you can. Next up, an RPG that nobody really thought would actually work, but in my eyes, it 100% worked. And that is The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. Nobody expected this game. Nobody did. I didn't expect it, because I played Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, which was bad, The Twin Towers, which was amazing, and of course, The Return of the King, which was the best one out of the lot. But when this came out, there was lots of turned heads about it. I was turning my head, all over the place. And I played the demo first hand and I thought to myself, this is interesting. It's like Final Fantasy and, and other RPGs, but with Lord of the Rings. So I went ahead and I bought it. And when I first opened it, it was two discs. So I thought, holy crap, this is going to be a long ass game like Resident Evil, like Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2 and 3. But when I got into it, I thought to myself, it's a very slow paced game. It really is slow at the beginning, really is. But as you move forward into the game, and then you start teaming up with Legolas, Gandalf the White, Aragorn, Gimli, and all the other characters from Lord of the Rings, it became so freaking fun. And like I said, it's a turn-based game. It's an RPG, if you guys want to know. It's like any other RPG you played. If you played Persona, you played Final Fantasy, 
you played any of that type of games, this is exactly the same. It's RPG turn-based. Perfectly easy, straightforward. Sometimes it can be get it can get a little bit difficult, but like I said, you think before you leap. And this is definitely a gem in my eyes. If you guys have not seen this game, please try and check it out. There is it is on other consoles, if I recall. I think it's on the PlayStation 2, the Nintendo Wii, I think, and I think on the Xbox 360. Not 100% about any other console, but yes, please check it out. It's an awesome game and definitely one for my treasures as a gem. But now the last one. I said to you guys I wasn't really going to put anything that was cherished to my heart but this one I couldn't say no to and it's a Pokemon game now you may be thinking oh it's Pokemon Coliseum or it's the Pokemon channel or anything like that it's none of them it's Pokemon Gale of Darkness XD the one that got away now you may be thinking what do you mean by the one that got away this came out I think four or five months after Pokemon Coliseum so pretty much, it's an instantly a follow-up, if you guys want to know. It's a, it's a complete sequel. But, everybody slated this game because it had the same mechanics as Colosseum, and it was pretty much exactly the same game, which I disagree with. It was definitely not like the original of Colosseum. But what this thing had, what Pokemon Colosseum didn't have, is that your starter was Eevee, not Espeon, and not... Um, and not... Um, Umbreon. You started with Eevee. That means you can choose on whether you wanted Umbreon or Espeon or Vaporeon or Jolteon or Flareon. You can have any of them five evolutions or you can just stuck with the Eevee. You can have it any way you want it. But also, it all, it all was built over that one dark legendary that everybody talks about. Dark Lugia. Wow! Dark freaking Lugia. In the normal Colosseum, we were just going after Shadow Pokemon like Shadow Entei, Shadow Suicune, Shadow Raikou, uh, Moltres, Articuno and Zapdos and also Ho-Ho as a special um, DLC, well not a special uh, mystery box. But this was all about that Pokemon. But besides that though, you can either go after standard normal Pokemon in Little Dens, which you couldn't do in Colosseum. There was lots of things in this that Colosseum didn't do and I loved it and like I said I didn't buy this when I was a kid I bought this years later and I paid pricey money for this game but luckily not as pricey as it is nowadays I paid around about 70 quid for this copy but now people are paying around about 100 to 200 to even 400 pound for a sealed copy and it's so much fun it really is so if you guys do have the money and you want to buy this game, go ahead and buy it. It's definitely a gem to play, but if you can't pay, pay for that, try and find an emulator on the PC. I'm sure you can find it on that way either way. But anyhow, that is my five gems on the GameCube. Now, I would like to ask you guys, though, if you guys do, and guys and girls, do have a GameCube in your possession, what games do you have and what gems do you actually do have? Do you have some rare ones? Do you have some expensive ones? Do you have ones that are actually dear to your heart? But like I said, please don't say anything about Mario because he's well known and he's super, super common. Please tell me on what you think. Leave it in the comments down below. Next episode. Hmm. Next episode. Hmm. That's a good, good cue because we've been doing a lot of Nintendo a lot, haven't we? And we do have two other Nintendo consoles we have left. Hmm. I'll put it on a poll for you guys. you got two choices before we continue. Is it going to be the Super Nintendo? Or is it going to be the Nintendo 64? Vote now. The poll is up now. With that being said, the people I'm going to to you guys for subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time for episode 6. Cheerio! <laughs>